It's the 15th of October and I'm Tom Glass and welcome to The Roast. Tonight we take a look at Mike Baird's appearance in a Daily Telegraph ad and Shari Markson's undercover media degree scoop. And you know what? I have some things to say about that. I don't actually. I'm undercover as a news satire host. I'm actually a professional journalist. this suit I'm wearing. No one would suspect I don't belong here. I'm more convincing as my undercover self than my real self as a professional journalist. Just like Shari. Anyway, here is Mark Humphreys with the headlines. He's undercover too, as a white man. Joe Hockey, the treasurer who has the recurring nightmare where he's in his underwear and there's a budget deficit and Peter Costello's watching, is in London at the moment. Enjoy yourself, Joe. Must be nice to get away from the journalists here who are constantly berating you. Because if there's one thing I love about the British, it's that they're notoriously polite. Tea. Oh. You're one of the dirtiest, most greenhouse oh. gas-emitting <laughs> countries in the OECD oh. group of developed countries. Is your government prepared to do anything to clean up its act? I spoke too soon. That's Joe being interviewed on the aptly named Hard Talk. The only more fitting title for that show would be News Fist. But Joe wasn't having any of it. Well, firstly, the, the comment you just made is absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous indeed. Wait, is it ridiculous? The Garneau Climate Change Review says Australia was the highest per capita emitter of greenhouse gas emissions in the OECD, even without exports of energy. So it's not ridiculous. But don't worry, hockey's got his own facts. Go on, Joe, tell the nice British man. And in fact, when it comes to coal, we produce some of the cleanest coal, if, uh, if that term can be used. No, it can't. You might as well say we produce some of the cleanest faeces. Interviewer Stephen Sacker wasn't having a bar of it and gave hockey another taste of his news fist. You are a very polluting nation and you've got a decision to make as a government about whether you're prepared to do anything serious to change that. Hey, Joe, tell them about the people you're paying less than the minimum wage to plant trees. Stephen, I don't accept the basis of your question. Wow, Stephen, you are some journalist. It's not every day Joe Hockey refuses to accept a question. Well, no, I don't accept the premise of your question. Well, I don't accept the premise of that question. Well, I, I don't accept that question. Well, I don't accept the premise of the question. To be fair, I did say it's not every day. Australian novelist Richard Flanagan has won one of the world's most prestigious literary awards, the Man Booker Prize. Congratulations, Richard. But if you want widespread recognition from Australians, I'm going to need you to kick this around. The book, The Narrow Road to the Deep North, is about the Allied soldiers who built the Death Railway in Southeast Asia and details the horror of the men who were forced to complete their hard labour, while often naked and malnourished, in the oppressive jungle heat, making it perfect poolside reading this summer. Flanagan will take home more than $91,000 in prize money, instantly making him Australia's highest paid author by about $90,000. And finally, researchers have found broccoli, the vegetable I'm not eating no matter what you say, Mum, may hold the key for an effective treatment for autism. Unfortunately, the anti broxination network believes broccoli may actually cause autism. For the roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Thank you, Mark. Jeez, I wish broccoli was the treatment for all my ailments instead of this massive suppository. Well, next up tonight, New South Wales Premier Mike Baird, seen here on the left trying his best to let the Prime Minister win, has promised to overhaul election funding laws and clean up politics in this state. But in a startling twist, Sydney's The Daily Telegraph has uncovered a video of the Premier in a dubious commercial relationship with a major media organisation. Shocking allegations. And apparently this relationship goes all the way to the top. The Daily Telegraph plus floor of the Daily Telegraph offices. Because this was an ad for the Daily Telegraph, featuring the New South Wales Premier playing footsies with three of the most relentless, self-appointed media watchdogs who slam bias wherever they see it, whether it be ABC Online or ABC TV. The bias, of course, is the ABC's most glaring failure. Biased ABC leads a howling media mob. Even ABC for kids isn't immune from criticism. Even the cartoon character Peppa Pig pushes a weird feminist line. I will say that he does have a point about Peppa Pig's effect on the young. Just the other day, some kid told me she didn't want to have a thumb war because that game's a manifestation of the male obsession with conflict and the thumb represented my phallus. 
But before you get all worked up about government resources helping private companies, Sydney Trains confirmed a production company paid for the use of the train in the advertisement. Still no word, however, on how much it cost the Telegraph to rent the Premier, or who was driving the government while Mike Baird was smiling for his close-up. But to be fair to the Premier, the ad was part of a national campaign, so we know that all the other state Premiers got on board the News Corp train as well. Access to all the news and all the sports. to all the news and all the sport on all the news and all the sport on any device, any time. Where are the other state leaders? Only the Telegraph's ad features the leader of the state. Oh, right. Baird was the only one. Well, unless Dennis Napthine was hiding in Matt Preston's cardamom cupcakes. Peekaboo. Shh. Cheeky Napthine. And because of that, Premier Baird has come under fire for his cameo, with New South Wales Greens MP John Kay, seen here looking like every other Greens MP, describing the ad as deeply inappropriate. He has exposed himself to the risk of being accused of currying favour with one outlet in order to get appropriate coverage during the election. Mm, and it didn't exactly help quash accusations that the paper is a mouthpiece for the coalition when one of the covers in the ad features Sydney's independent Lord Mayor Clover Moore headless in a washing machine, while the article showing about Baird was tackling the issues affecting the state. Anyway, it's a good thing Baird has the telegraph behind him because the state has a lot of problems to tackle. Another MP sidelined as ICAC claims 10th Liberal scalp. We'll be right back. Have you ever gotten a politician to spruik your business? Why did you do that? Is it because you're willing to try just about anything to stave off the death of your industry? Or do you just have an ideological boner for the coalition? We'd love to hear about it. At the Roast TV or hashtag Roast TV. But News Corp journalists aren't just riding in trains with the New South Wales Premier. Occasionally, they also write articles. Like the Australian's media editor, Shari Markson, who went undercover at two Sydney universities to expose anti-Murdoch indoctrination in first-year media courses and she had some big revelations. The lecturer referenced positive aspects of News Corp only briefly, saying it employed some of the best journalists in the country, but even this she qualified, saying the company also employed some not-so-good ones as well. Not-so-good ones? Who would, who would they be? No. Surely a complete blank. But the hard-hitting revelations from Markson didn't stop there. I went undercover at uni media courses. I must look young because no one pulled me up. Or maybe it's because it's not normal to walk up to an adult woman at a university and demand to know her age and what she's doing there. Whatever the reason, Markson's exclusive investigation will definitely lead to a change in university media courses so that prospective journalists can learn how to work at News Corp. And so in conclusion, Always check your facts, OK? Good. So now that we've got fact-based journalism out of the way for the sake of balance, we now move to our newest media module, News Corp Journalism. Firstly, you're going to have to ditch all self-awareness. You won't be able to deny News Corp's naked political pressure if you're also able to remember that your company printed this and this and not to mention this where a Liberal Premier could easily be mistaken for a News Corp columnist. You see, for News Corp, you need to reach a level of self-awareness so low, when you look in a mirror, you think your twin is spying on you. Next, you're really going to have to pretend you think global warming is not happening, and the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is terrible. Even if the Australian Press Council has expressed considerable concern after upholding readers' complaints of inaccuracies in some of the Australian's articles, doesn't matter. No matter how often you're told in other modules not to present both sides of the argument on climate change because balanced reporting allowed skeptics to be given airtime, you do it anyway. You can't balance 97% common sense with 3% skepticism. That's just a mountain of sense. Real balance is 50% facts combined with 50% delusion. You see? Finally, whenever you're going to a different place to do your job, use the word undercover. It makes the mere act of walking into a lecture theatre sound like you've infiltrated the mafia. Brilliant. 
and move. So, okay, okay, thank you, everybody. And, uh, and don't forget your assignment for tomorrow's seminar, uh, 500 words on how bias is only a problem when it's left wing. Okay, yeah, don't run. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the evidence that left-wing lecturers brainwash young journos is it's undeniable. I mean, just ask famous left-wing warrior Shari Marxist, uh, sorry, Shari Markson, who studied there in the early 2000s and now writes exposés for that famous left-wing rag, The Australian. So what these unis need to do is produce a critical journo, the kind of thinker who, if confronted with a train carriage of News Corp employees, would know the proper way to react. We have Australia's most conservative columnists, some other white folk, and our very own Premier. The Daily Telegraph, one point of view over multiple devices. <laughs> the Daily Telegraph, reinforcing your prejudices daily. But it wouldn't be fair to say that the Daily Telegraph is the only newspaper that reinforces your prejudices. It's also the Sunday Telegraph. Good night. Oh, and I shouldn't forget all their interstate equivalents. Herald Sun, Korea Mail, The Mercury, The Advertiser, Saturday.